Hi witches, welcome back to another magical Monday. Um, today uh, we are going to be returning back to our Witchcraft 101 topic and discussing the tools you might be using in your practice as a witch. So I know when I first started, I was like very overwhelmed and I felt like I needed to like invest all of my money and like all of this crazy stuff into buying all these fancy tools. And yes, the draw to do that is absolutely fan Like I get it, I totally understand. Which might just be my tendency, like as a magpie, I just, I like shiny things and I also like things associated with witchcraft so I was just like perfect um, but I also want to make sure that people know that um, you know you don't need all of these fancy tools all of these fancy supplies we're gonna be talking a little bit about the most important tool in a separate video um, that the most important tool to a witch which is your intuition um, but I wanted to talk about some of the more physical tools that you might be um, you know coming into contact with or maybe some terms that you know I didn't have explained to me, so it took me way longer to figure out what they were. <laughs> um and hopefully I can save you some grief with this video. Okay, so just to dive right in, let's start off with our first two tools, the athame and the bowling. So both of these tools are ritual knives, and before anyone freaks out, no, witches are not sacrificing people, that does not happen. Um, let me explain what each of these are used for. So firstly, the athame. The athame is a triangular bladed knife with, uh, well, a triangular knife with blades on both sides like this. So if the blade looks like this, this side is a blade, and this side is a blade. It is not used actually for cutting anything physical. In fact, it usually um, is reserved specifically for energetically cutting things, such as cutting energetic cords or delineating a specific sacred circle around um, a practitioner or opening up the sacred circle uh, for a practitioner to enter and exit at their will. Now, on the other hand, the bowling is a curved knife, so it kind of looks like a sickle. Um, it usually has a white handle and this is used for cutting physical items, but it's almost always specifically used for harvesting sacred herbs to be used in your practice specifically. So it's not just another gardening tool, it's used for a spiritual purpose. Um, now again, both of these knives um, are not used to like hurt people or to like make blood sacrifice. I've heard it all. So like, no, that's not what those are for. They all have like very specific purposes. However, I don't really see a lot of use of ritual knives these days like I feel like it was way more popular like back when I first began but that might also just be because I was a practicing Wiccan and these tools are pretty standard when it comes to like um like a typical Wiccan altar or a typical um you know what the tools that a Wiccan might use so I see that quoted a lot in books specifically about Wicca if you are a Wiccan, you may not have these tools. Again, it is completely up to the practitioner. I'm not trying to generalize too much, but I've seen more Wiccans using um, athames and bowlings than I've seen um, like other types of practitioners, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, just a personal observation. <laughs> um, Next on our list of tools is the Book of Shadows. So the Book of Shadows is something that I reference a lot. It is kind of a bunch of things all at once if you would like it to be. Um, so some people do kind of have a distinction between their grimoire, which is where they write down spells um, and like charts and correspondences. It's kind of like almost like a physical textbook. Whereas the Book of Shadows is more, um, you know, kind of like a journal where you talk about your practice and observations from the spells that you are putting into your grimoire, if that makes sense. Now. I personally do not make that distinction. I kind of have both of them together. Um, so I have like all of my charts and stuff and all of the spells that I have written down that I share, <laughs> um, you know, like at various times, either on Instagram or TikTok, whatever. Um, but also I have like a separate page next to it so I can kind of write my notes as I am doing the working so that way I can reflect on it and it's all in one place. I just sometimes like, I just feel like having two different things, um, you know, are, it's just a lot for me. So your book of shadows can look any way you want. Personally, mine right now is like solely digital. Um, so some of it is actually through videos. That was kind of like the idea behind my Year of the Witch project. Um, and I will eventually be going back <laughs> and like finishing up my book of shadows based on those, um, like I want to make a physical one uh, based on those videos. So you can get a journal if you would like. I see people, um, you know, who have a three ring binder so they can take things in and um, take things out as they need it. I personally am just a huge sucker for the like leather bound tomes. So that's definitely the role I'm going, but I want it to be more of like, um, kind of like scrapbooky and kind of an art book as well. So it's something that I kind of just want to have as like a testament to my practice at this point in my life. So um, 
yeah, that's what a Book of Shadows is, and yours can look any way you want. So next we have two more tools that are really similar. We have the cauldron and the chalice. Um, so the cauldron is actually something that witches, I know it's a stereotype, but I use mine actually in my practice. I just used it for something over on Patreon. Um, and these are, you know, basically what a cauldron looks like if you can think about you know like the cartoony depiction um it's kind of like a bowl like a metal bowl looking thing with three feet so they are usually made out of some sort of iron they might have something that you can hang them like a handle um that you can use to hang them over a bonfire um a lot of the times i don't actually like m like boil soups or anything or like stews or potions um i actually use it to hold like a little charcoal disc and to use um either a dry incense blend or I use thing I use it to like mix things together for a spell. Um, the cauldron is often a symbol of like the womb so like the idea is that you put a lot of things like separate things in there that action of transformation can be tied to whatever spell work that you are doing so yeah. Um, on the other hand, the chalice is somewhat similar, especially if you are mixing like liquids up in a cauldron. Uh, the chalice is often used to have, um, to carry either sacred wine. I often use uh, it for moon water um, or, you know, having offerings and stuff like that. I actually have a pewter chalice that I got like when I was, before I was even practicing. It's actually one of like the oldest tools that I have. Um, I was like maybe 11 years old and like had just figured out like what Wicca was and was like, oh, that's interesting. And then, and, like found this really cool chalice and was like oh that's interesting like I really like this and then just it kind of devolved from there um so I, I really love using my chalice but sometimes it does kind of give me like church vibes so it's kind of rare that I use it these days um but again the chalice is used on the altar to sometimes represent the womb as well um usually associated with the element of water and usually carry some sort of like sacred um you know blessed wine mead moon water or something to that effect next we have the besom or the broom and again this is not just like a witchy stereotype I actually do use mine in my practice um so I I have like a full like length actual full size like witchy broom so in my practice right after I finish cleaning my house and I'm ready to start like energetically cleansing it too I will finish cleaning I will grab my besom open my front door and kind of sweep all of the energy um, out towards my front door and I always hold the broom slightly above the ground so it's not actually ever touching the ground um, and getting dirty and stuff that's just not what I want um, and then I will hang the broom outside overnight. I usually do this under the full moon, so I'll like charge it. Um, and then I will bring it back into my house and it's also a protective ward. So there's that too. Um, so you can definitely enchant your broom. You can use it as decor if you would like, but I actually do use it energetically and um, a lot of witches do actually have like tiny hand brooms that they use for energetic cleansing of like themselves, like on the go, I love that, or throughout their house if you don't want a big old witch broom on your wall, which I mean, I get it, I understand. At a glance, this tool may not seem like a specifically witchy tool, but it is awesome to use in your practice. And that tool is the bell. So bells are really awesome if you can't um, use like smoke cleansing or like any sort of like cleansing outside of energetic or sound cleansing. So whenever you are ringing a bell that shakes up the energy around you, that gets all of that kind of stagnancy out of your space. So I have bells like right outside of my sacred space. Um, it is thought that whenever the bells ring, not only are they stirring up the energy, but also like frightening away negative spirits or negative energies, which I like. I'm a little bit superstitious, so I, I enjoy having bells around my space. I would like to ultimately have like wind chimes all throughout my garden when I finally have my garden space. Um, and I kind of see wind chimes similar to bells in that they're making that sound, they're stirring up that energy. Um, I have another set of bells over for Apollo which I will ring in the morning just to kind of wake me up. Um, and again, they're just really great for doing that sound cleansing if you are unable to like use incense or um, like an oil diffuser or have like witchy stuff around. If you just have like a little bell, it works. And that is a perfect first tool if that is what works for you. Next on our list, we have the pentacle. Um, and usually this is like a clay, wood, 
stone like little disc that sits on a witch's altar it has the uh pentacle engraved in it and it's really more for in my practice has always been more for decoration but also is used to represent the element of earth um on a wiccan's altar or a witch's altar these discs can be used to make crystal grids by putting crystals on the different points of the pentacle or surrounding the circle that goes around the pentacle um and it also can be kind of used to create like delineate delineate a even smaller more concentrated space where you are practicing. So um, I don't have one of these like a little altar token or an altar tile with a pentacle on it but um, I do appreciate them and I really want to get one for the future so um, if you guys see any cool ones hit me up. Next on our list, I think one of the most important tools that kind of houses everything that we have talked about so far is the altar. So, um, you know, I think I talked a little bit about altars during our sacred spaces episode. So if you guys are interested, go check those out. But an altar can be either static or dynamic. So I have a working altar that I really, I use a lot and I change around a lot. Um, and I have like static altars for my deities that I don't do that a lot for. Um, so yours could be a combo of both. Like you could have like part of it that kind of just stays the same and another part um, that is where you do your spell work, which is also something that I have done in the past, especially when I wasn't able to openly practice as much as I can today to kind of keep it contained. Um, or you can definitely have things delineated. So right now I'm trying to count. I have one, two, three. So five, six, seven, eight. Like eight altars in this room, nine altars in this room, right? So all of them are like various, <laughs> A lot of them are for various intentions and like different deities and stuff and a lot of them just like don't move <laughs> uh, but my working altar is the one that changes the most. Altars do not have to be expensive. <laughs> I found most of mine for like $20 at yard sales, gave them a fresh coat of paint and um, they look really beautiful. So I encourage you guys to be as creative as possible. Your witch's practice is different. Those are some of the standard tools I feel like witches do use in their practice. Um, personally, I don't really have any ritual knives. And again, I don't really have a pentacle, um, but I do have everything else. Some other items that you might wanna consider um, adding to your practice at any point, if th these are things that call to you include um, crystals and herbs, which is actually kind of sometimes people's like dip into witchcraft. It's like, oh, I found this cool crystal. Oh, there's this whole spirituality. Awesome. Um, so you might end up having kind of like a crystal collection first, which is amazing. Um, so crystals, herbs, oils, incense, any anything that's kind of like consumable, I guess, like not like physically consumable, but like gets used up. Um, I would also include candles in this, such as deity candles. You could have decorative candles. I love chime candles, which are like the really tiny ones that you can get at most metaphysical stores. They're kind of like bigger birthday candles. <laughs> um, but you might find that you are called to experiment with some of these and these items, so like crystals, herbs, incense, oils, um, candles, stuff like that, they're a little bit like on the less expensive side. So if you're just kind of experimenting, you're trying to figure out, you know, what tools you feel called to, starting with something maybe small like that. So maybe picking out like a really cute crystal and a really nice candle that you like that smells good that you burn when you are meditating. Like that would be something that I would recommend to beginners if that, if you're kind of like intimidated by going into a metaphysical store or um, just like aren't sure necessarily where to start, I would recommend that. Um, if you are kind of further along in your practice, maybe introducing things like um, deity candles, like I said, um, or deity statues of like, you know, the god and goddess or whatever deities that you so worship. And again, as you progress in your own practice, you might feel drawn to using items such as tarot cards, um, pendulums, scrying discs, crystal balls, stuff like that, all of those beautiful divinatory tools. So I encourage you guys to, again, establish kind of a baseline of things that you're interested in, maybe buying a few smaller things before really investing. Um, sometimes I feel like people on the internet make it feel like you have to like invest into like various things, like their program or like their stuff in order to be successful. Um, and I just like, I hope I never give off that vibe. So I would say that like 90% of the stuff that I have and that I use in my practice has been found at thrift stores. Um, or like on Facebook marketplace because I am a fiend and also a middle-aged like mom it's fine um, but I, I really encourage you guys to like not stress out about like having all the tools at once like focus on like your own practice and making sure that you are feeling spiritually fulfilled the fancy shiny stuff as like attractive as it might be and again I totally get it like magpie brain over here 100% um, 
I just I don't want it to be overwhelming to you guys and I don't want you to feel like you you know you have to invest all of this like time and energy and money into something that you're not even sure if you really like. As a reminder, take a deep breath, have fun with it and build the practice that you want to build. I'm so proud of all of you guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me today and I'll see you in the next one.